Hello everybody, I'm Amar Central and welcome back to another video of OMSI 2 The Bus Simulator with me once again. Well we are back in Gainsborough Phase 2, the Mr Moose project and um, the Phase 2 that has recently just been released um, including a load of new bus services on top of what was already in Gainsborough version 1. So in this video we are going to be taking a little look at Route 103. Um, part of the old free service and running between Gainsborough and Morton that in this map now operates as a circular service. So we are going to be operating it as a circular diagram, leaving on the last one of the day that is 17.10 and getting back into Gainsborough at 17.35 in game time. So the vehicle that we are driving today is G754UYT that is in the real life Redfern Travel Fleet, Redfern Travel being part of Johnson um, Rose Tours based in workshops very near to Gainsborough, thus why we've chosen them. Um, it is one of their Leyland Olympians, one of their old, old gardener. Um, I'm not, I don't know if it's a gardener actually. One of the, all I know is, is it's an old Leyland Olympian. Um, but obviously this isn't a Leyland Olympian. This is probably the closest you can get to a Leyland Olympian in the game. It is the absolutely magnificent Optair Spectra made by V3D in full height configuration and with the step entrance. So get the vehicle set up now, it's very nice to be back at the helm of this bus again as it has been a very long time since I've driven this one on a video as it is one of my um, favourites I will admit um, and it is very nice to be back at the helm. So there we go, so it is a lovely bus as this. The vehicle itself is a payware bus. Um, it's a very, very reasonable price. I believe it's about eight or nine pounds. I will link it in the description below, um, and it's one of the ones I do recommend buying. I mean, I do recommend most of the DLCs, as they all are very nice, but this is probably one of my favourite ones. Just for the fact that the rest of them are sort of new modern vehicles, and this is something quirky and a bit old. So, the repaint itself is part of the Nottinghamshire liveries. For the Digibus Phantom pack, um, that is the most recent um, Digibus Phantom, that's what it's called for legal reasons, although for me it's an Optair Spectra um, vehicle um, on the Fellows Film forums, and it's created by TR673. It's a free to download enhancement pack um, for the Spectra that I do recommend downloading um, and look at those wheel trims as well that are actually realistic um, because. Redfern Travel and Johnson Bros do like to make their buses look fancy. So yeah, and the map itself is free to download, so all will be in the description below. I better not, better not leave early, as it is the last one of the day. There we go, that's why we don't leave early. Let's move the time forward, there we go, and off we go. I will also change the weather to real weather, and I don't think it's going to change much, judging by the fact that it is clear blue sky outside as well. So it is very nice back at the helm of this bus. The DAF DB250 engine in the game is very, very nice sounding. Um, and has a lot of power behind it. Sometimes you can forget when you've driven other vehicles like the Streetlight how much power an Optair Spectra actually has, or that DB250 engine actually has. Unfortunately, a lot um, of the DAF DB250 vehicles, especially now in the Arriva fleet, the Arriva Raw is the main buyer of them, are now being withdrawn and scrapped. Most of the Optair Spectras were withdrawn from Arriva Yorkshire um, a few years ago and were in storage and have now been scrapped as well, unfortunately. Um, they have gone up to Hardwick's, um, one of the Barnsley um, bus breakers, and have been scrapped one by one, alongside a number of Lowlander bodied DAF DB250s and some Gemini variants as well. However, two Optair Spectras at Arriva Yorkshire did survive on on into service a bit longer. 703, that unfortunately had an engine, sort of, the engine blew up a little bit, lasted a little bit longer. And the last vehicle in public service with a Reva Yorkshire themselves, although 717 is with Yorkshire Tigers, still until Transit take over, and 704 is a driver trainer. But the last one with the original operator of a Reva Yorkshire, um, still based at Bell Isle, was 723. 
that at the time of this recording, bored out of service, I believe, two or three weeks ago, and has now been preserved. It's been preserved by a good mate of mine, if you're watching Jordan, hello, um, and has been preserved. So there's going to be a lot of work taking place in that vehicle um, over the sort of coming weeks and months to get it ready for the rally season, and hopefully it will be making an appearance, and pending a few things here and there, will be making an appearance during the late part of the 2021 rally season. So it's one I'd keep an eye out for. It's numerically the last one of the batch of 24 purchased by Reba Yorkshire in 2002 and was obviously the last one in public service as well. So it did very, very well, did that bus. There's all these seats and she still wants to stand up. That is commitment. That is commitment, is that? So Redfern Travel, part of Johnson Bros, operate primarily school contract services. I believe they also operate a number of private hires and Johnson Bros themselves have an absolute huge depot um, in Worksop, or nearby Worksop, should I say, um, that I believe they have more than one actually. They have, I think, the works up there, and then they have one uh, just in the East Midlands area, uh, just off the board of South Yorkshire. They also have a huge one there as well. My apologies for not being able to remember the exact site. All I know is, is they have more than one site, um, and their depots are huge. Um, they run coaches, they run newer um, buses, they've got a lot of ex Nottingham City Transport, Scania's, Scania double deckers. Um, and they also operate a vast fleet of old Leyland Olympians. Not Volvo, Leyland Olympians. They operate a few Gardener ones, um, a few newer Leyland Olympians, like I believe the one that we're replicating with the registration plate we've used. And they also still have a very, very small number, but still have some, Bristol VRs. Um, Johnson Bros is pretty much the last operator now using Bristol VRs in service, sort of in like passenger cabin service on school contracts. So I have been on a number of Johnson Bros Redfern, um, Redfern travel um, double deckers in my time. Um, never sort of obviously they operate school contracts primarily, but you can if you do know the ways to try and find them, you can end up finding some of these old Leyland Olympians lurking around, lurking around the works of sort of um, East Midlands and Derbyshire areas and go for riding them um, if you know where you're looking. So the places to find them basically, um, I believe it still runs, I don't know if it's running at the moment, is the bingo bus in Chesterfield um, that leaves at I believe half 10 in the morning, half 12 off a road near to the town, like in the middle of the town centre, near to, in between the railway station and the bus station. And it's a very, very short trip, it's about five minutes, but it usually has a G reg, um, a G or a H reg vehicle operating it, one of the Leyland Olympians. However, the driver also sometimes brings a Scania as well, as believe me, that company have absolutely anything. So you can get on that for free. Um, you can go up to the bingo one, that is about a five, five, five or seven minute trip over there across town, but it is still a nice trip, um, nice little short ride, a free ride if you're bobbing down there for the day and you're going on other business. So it's something I would recommend. So another way you can go on their vehicles is on tours and um, events and things, events and stuff like that. So obviously with Redfern Travel and Johnson Bros um, being like having a lot of old buses, there's a number of enthusiasts work for them and these enthusiasts sometimes bring along buses to events um, and I've had a, it might be this bus actually, G5, G754, <laughs> a G754 I believe, um, of the Peterborough Fenland Bus Fest a number of years ago. That is a relic I do heavily recommend. It is one of the best ones in the calendar. It's incredibly busy. So do be warned that there is a lot of people there. So do not go with wanting specific buses in mind because you will be queuing for certain routes and you may not get on the bus that you wanted to. 
However, it is an absolutely sublime event. It really visits all sorts of monstrous vehicles running. It's incredibly organised. Um, and I'm not just saying this because friends of mine run it. I'm saying this because it is absolutely amazing. It is a serious... One of the, one of the biggest and best bus events in the UK calendar, I would say. So there is that, and on top of that, there are usually a number of bus enthusiast tours that take place at the operator as well, especially when they just purchase new vehicles or people fancy riding on the old classics that they have as well. So do keep an eye on them for on social media. Um, there's a group called Bus Running Days who organise events like that, so do be sure to check them out. Um, sort of when things continue to go back to normal, just so that you are kept in the loop with things. So as you can see around here as well, um, this is phase two, so it, this is the old Morton bus route, but a, l a fair bit of the scenery has changed and that does make it look rather nice. So there's definitely been some scenery work around here, it does look a lot less cluttered, it looks a lot more organised and a lot prettier, so it is quite nice. I believe there might be some changes, some changes might have taken place at the terminus, um, the old Morton terminus. So we, we shall have to have a little look at that as well. So basically in this scenario we're pretending that Redfern Travel are helping out Stagecoach and potentially on, I don't know, they've got vehicle shortage or something like that. Um, but Stagecoach East Midlands themselves are an incredibly interesting operation. If you do ever get a chance to spend a day or travelling on the, the Stagecoach East Midlands buses, I would highly recommend it. And the East Midlands area pretty much encompasses um, sort of areas from, the, the sort of the interesting bits is pretty much from Skegness to Scunthorpe inclusive, although obviously Hull is quite interesting with some of the um, older Tridents and even the ex Stagecoach. Manchester stuff that they've got. Just don't want to pull out in front of any of these because I remember how tight this turn is. So I won't be I won't be taking it stupidly fast. There we go. So yeah, um Stagecoach East Midlands is an interesting operation. I mean just to give you an idea of the interesting sorts of stuff. If you go to Skegness, if you want to already do go and check out my Skegness Open Top video review, um, Open Top Bus Network review, should I say, and that basically sums up what I'm about to say. But they have old original, they are pretty much the oldest Tridents within the Stagecoach UK fleet still running, they have S-Rangers, S-BWCs, still running around ex-London vehicles. Got some TFUGs as well that are that were new to the um, Grimsby and Cleef Ops operation. They've got some ex-first lead B70Ls, again B70Ls are quite quite rare in the stagecoach fleet so they've got a number of them as well all on open top work but again for all the videos of those vehicles and those types do be sure to check out the open top review video of open top bus network review video should i say um as it includes little little nice recordings of those vehicles as well as an overview of the network how it was in 20 2020 um that it was a little bit more enhanced than normal so moving on, sort of going up the coast and moving up to Cleefops and Grimsby. Grimsby have a number of X stage uh, X first Chester um, that were purchased by Stagecoach and B7 RLEs running around 212s um, and they run around on all sorts, the interconnects, local services, absolutely tons of them there and it's a nice variety. Then you've got Hull that has a number that mismatch of stuff. I mean they have X um, Tridents from all over the place. I think they had a few Peterborough ones last time I went up. Then they have the um, fleet of interesting, um, should I say, is, is, is the key objective there, interesting MX07 191 um, E400 Tridents from Manchester. The, most of them are pretty tired, but they still make for quite a nice, something different to photograph, um, as it's they've pretty much taken over in the past four months. Um, and I believe one of them set on fire 
on the way to Hull. So, yeah, they're an interesting batch. So then you've got Scunthorpe that has 21248 um, and a load of B70L Vikings. Um, so 21248 is an X first Wigan B7 hourly MX06 reg. And it is the last MX06 reg um, that runs um, in any stagecoach fleet. It's the last one from the pretty much the last vehicle from the stagecoach Wigan operation to still be running, bar the B9s in Scotland that are a bit iffy um, depending on whenever they want to run. So 21248 as well as being, as I was informed by Harry Carter, hello, and you get a free shout out for this, um, sent us some photos of it repainted into the new Stagecoach 2020 livery that I certainly was not expecting, and uh, so it did make for quite the nice surprise. Oh wow, they've made it into a loop. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is fancy. This is a lot nicer. Is this? Oh wow, I like this. We might have to. Where is the sun? Where's the sun? In the totally wrong spot, of course. Come, I'll come back here later on in the right sunlight and get a shot for thumbnail. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I've got a shot now, but I, I will wait. I'll probably end up waiting a bit. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Wait a bit later and get in it now. So that's a nice terminus loop, is that? Can't see folks coming, but I've pretty much pulled out at that point. So now this is the terminus, however, I'm not anticipating to pick anybody up on the way back. So we'll make a move. Vaccine, as this is the last bus of the day, I'm really not expecting to pick them up. So the end, yeah, if we move across um, the rest of the East Midlands region, um, you've got Mansfield and Worksall, um, and Gainsborough for that matter. Gainsborough have, a, have an absolute stupid ton of ex-Manchester MX-53 um, President Tridents, an absolute ton of them. Um, so they have all of them. Then Worksall's very similar, there's a few Tridents, uh, that's about as interesting as it gets there. Um, and then Mansfield, that again is a interesting operation, similar to Hull and the weird front of different tridents on a day still have um, presidents left unlike Hull, who I believe have got rid of theirs, and um, now in favour of the 400s. So Mansfield as well is interesting as they've currently got a E300, um, I believe, um, out of the blue. I mean, out of nowhere, quite frankly. Um, they've got an E300 um, rocking around at locals. So, yeah, I mean, she this, this is the fun thing about Stagecoach East Midlands is they have absolutely anything and everything in their fleet. They really, really do. It is a serious yard fleet. And I mean, if you can if you can go over for a weekend, potentially when there's a bus tour going on, so you can get a red, you can get your mix of Red Fern Olympians and things in. And then the other day you can get your Stagecoach, Stagecoach Tridents in. I mean, you're winning really. It is is a good weekend sort of it'd be a good friday it'd be a good friday saturday friday on the stage good cheese middle and stuff and saturday on a red fern um johnson bros bus tour so something i did forget to mention and um, that johnson bros are also coach dealership as well so they have also sort of part living into like coach dealership work so they import new coaches, register them, sell them. In a similar way to what York Pullman do, um, Johnson Bros and York Pullman are very, very similar operations. York Pullman um, has about four or five different depots of varying sizes, runs all sorts of vehicles of varying sizes. I don't believe they have any step entrance vehicles left, so they are a bit different to Redfern on that front, but they run all sorts of low floor vehicles, Vintage coaches, modern coaches, I think they even have a beaver, a beaver bread van. Um, and they run absolutely all sorts, even on a lot of belts until recently when it was preserved. So they have a very similar operation and then they buy and sell coaches as well, just like Johnson Bros. So they are very, very simple companies. And they are both also sort of local to their own areas. So they do also stay very, very local to the operational bases like for um, Johnson Bros, Redfern, um, all that lot. 
it's based in the Derbyshire East Midlands area. It doesn't really go any further than that, apart from your coach towns, obviously. And then York Pullman's based in York and the surrounding areas, like Pocklington. But they don't go any further than that, unless it's coach town. And it's that sort of thing. And more rail replacement to be fair, um, because York Pullman have been doing rail replacement work recently using their lovely um, sort of B7 RLEs, B8 RLEs and their lovely 70 plate Agora that has also been in Manchester on the Go North West bus ranks that are changing um, from this week. So speaking of those bus ranks, God, it just sounds so nice, hang on, I've got to do something. Just gonna have a listen to the DAF DB250 engine from the back seat. So yeah, speaking of going off west from the 19th of um, April, they have announced that um, they will be going back to normal fares on all but free services during the daytime, that is. And alongside the uh, going back to normal fares, they will also be increasing the amount of buses um, operating on their services. So I believe that is a mix of gone off, more Go North West drivers returning, so there is a few more drivers have returned and um, back to work. And as well as that, there is also... We come in, yeah, we came in the back end, entrance last time, it just, it's because I don't do this that often, it just took me by surprise. And as well as a few more drivers being back, meaning that there's more Go North West buses out themselves, and they are also providing other bus companies, such as MP Travel, who have been operating on these strikes as well, being given them some of their ticket machines, so they can properly issue tickets and fares. Um, that's the main reason why these free services excluded, and the reason there are the free, the reason the free services are excluded. There we go. Sorted. So the reason there are um, service exclusions is because obviously during the daytime Edwards coaches are still running the 67s and some of the orbits and those coaches do not have ticket machines if you do want to listen to them to some coach um, sort of thrash action and you are missing sort of coach trips out and things um, I took a little ride on the new Flixbus network and there is a nice sort of backseat um, coach thrash video from a Scania Kitano Levante that I must admit made for a very very beasty run down on the Flixbus network but you can also check out in another video. So yes that was route 103 the Morton Circular Service it was nice seeing how it had changed in phase two as well as certainly a few things have sort of changed I would say for the better the very very nice improvements in places and um, I really do like that turning circle as well it's a lot nicer to sort of loop around although I must admit it was a little bit tight. So the repaint and the map are free to download there in the description below and the bus is a payware, um, is a payware that's worth it, I mean from this video as you can see it's a beast of vehicle, the sounds are lovely as well. It does come with the with the sort of full height variant that we're driving now as well as the low heights for step entrance and low floor variants or with row blinds, LEDs and dot matrix destination blind options. So it is worth it, I mean there's, there's a fair few options and although it does come with sort of digi pack, digi bus names at the front you can download a free um, branding patch that I again will link in the description below that changes all the digi bus names to Optair and then changes your steering wheel from FAF to DAF so it just makes it nice and proper. So if you have enjoyed this video do be sure to hit the like button so that more people can find it and enjoy it like you have. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing for more content like this, both from the virtual transport world, as well as the real-life bus industry and real-life bus industry reviews. Again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been interesting um, for you all. And I will see you all in the next video I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.